Chapter 15. Riva I first see Riva in the communal dining hall. She is one of the few foreigners in the ashram. The communal hall is a place for silence. We serve food and eat food in silence. Women and men sit on opposite sides of the hall, so there is very little mingling that happens during eating times. I notice Riva right away. She is tall and thin, has braided golden hair and blue eyes, her pale skin mismatched to the orange salwar and vermilion on her forehead. She is serving rice, going from one person to the next, a bright smile radiating her face. She notices me staring at her. She smiles. She is probably used to people staring at a white woman in sannyasin renunciate clothes. I smile back. I continue thinking about her after dinner. I realize why she stands out in my eyes. She reminds me of Alice. I keep bumping into Riva as I go about the campus activities with Karna. She is always smiling, always happy. After two years on the road, I am suddenly thinking about my appearance. I shaved my head and facial hair the very first day I had come to the ashram. I look at myself in the bathroom mirror. Chronic hunger has given my eyes an unnatural gleam. My cheekbones are jutting out. Two of my lower teeth are missing, courtesy of a policeman who decided to kick them in. I feel self-conscious for no reason. Karna is a simple soul. He is not weighed down by the grand happiness and sufferings of the world. He is not ambitious for his voice to be heard or his actions to be seen. What need or pain he sees in front of him, he addresses them fearlessly and without judgment. When he feels he has done what he can, he moves on. He sees no need for philosophies of heaven and hell. Maybe that is why he sleeps peacefully at night. I see him as the brother I never had. I believe he too sees me as a younger brother. Prem Baba is a constant presence. I see him at the weekly darshans and sometimes when he comes out to stroll in the vast agricultural land that belongs to the ashram. Whenever Baba asks Karna to meet him, I tag along. Baba sends Karna out on missions to rescue people in difficult circumstances and bring them to the ashram, just as had happened to me. Karna is always thrilled to do this. Sometimes he comes back empty-handed. Sometimes he has people accompanying him. The people who come often stay for a short time and leave. But a few, like me, stay on to serve. Karna and I work in the garden along with several other volunteers. Working with plants is a healing experience. It is beautiful to see the seeds we planted become vegetables and fruits, which become part of our consumption. The labor keeps me away from my dark thoughts. Plus, the company of Karna brightens even my most difficult days. I trust Karna enough to tell him my life story, of my journeys from Chennai to the US and back, of Alice and Sita, of my inner darkness. He listens wide-eyed. I always knew you were more than what you appeared to be, Arjuna, he says with wonderment. You should be doing so much more with your life. But he does not push me. I ask Karna to not share my story with anyone. He agrees. Karna seems a bit agitated one day. I broke my promise, he says with anguish. I was talking to Riva. She was asking about you, and without thinking I shared your life story with her. I am confused. Why was Riva asking about me? It had become a routine for us to smile at each other in the lunch hall. Once or twice I had interacted with her when I brought in the produce from the fields to the kitchen where she volunteers. I cannot help thinking how much she looks like Alice. It is okay, Karna. What was she asking about me? Karna seems relieved. Oh, just that she was curious about you and what your story was. I realize I don't know anything about Riva. Karna reads my mind. Riva is from Israel. She was on a sightseeing tour last year when she saw Prem Baba's book in a bookstall in Hyderabad. She left her travelling troop and headed over here. You see, she was working her way through a divorce. I guess Baba's words brought her peace. After a very long time, I feel something shifting inside. I cannot place my finger on it. 